What's up everybody? How are you doing? Welcome to my channel again. Um, now I am sharing my experiences living in Lagos, Nigeria. And the one thing that I wanted to share with you guys about today is money. Um, and all I ask in return is that you like this video, you comment on it, if, you, if anything sounds fascinating, or so consider subscribing to my channel if you like more contents like this. So let's get to it. So when I first came to Nigeria, one of the things that I had to figure out is transaction. So when I'm using the term money, I mean transaction. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview of everything that I have learned staying here in the last three months that I just didn't realize when I first moved here. I learned so much and this was nothing that anybody shared on YouTube or at least I couldn't find it. So I'm going to take this opportunity to share it just in case you go to Nigeria. You're a little bit familiar with how transaction works here. So first things first, and there's a lot of things changing consistently. But first things first, when people first come here, um, the challenge is they have to change their foreign currency into a local currency. So there's two ways to do that. You can go to a financial institution and change it, or you can change it on the parallel exchange market, also known as the black market. So these are people on the street that would that trade foreign currency for for regular currency. Um, now, a lot of people go for the black market because the exchange rate is way higher than if you go to the bank. So for example, the current exchange rate at the bank is maybe somewhere around 400 Naira um, per dollar. And then the black market can be like set 470 Naira or 500 Naira per dollar. So if you add that up, it could be a difference of $200 if you're changing like 2000 which is a lot of money. So some people go towards that. And then some people, because of safety or the inconvenience, they don't want to have to worry about it. They just transfer money directly to their account, which we're going to talk about. Or they go to a bank and have it changed. Or they know of a relative that helps them change, blah, 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 blah. So that's like the first step um, that you have to figure out when you're here. It's always better always better to find someone that you trust that you know that knows how things work around here to help you and that's standard any country that you go to it's always a much much better experience although i've went by myself one time to change money uh, because i'm just an adventurer uh, but i still went to a place that was a little bit more secured i went to a co hotel and suites so you definitely have to go through security to go in there and then they have a little small art market where there's people there to change money so that's an easy way for you to change money it's very secured it's in a hotel then you can get a great market rate and again i just didn't do this without knowing anybody i knew somebody who referred me to this person that this is the person that you can go do it so again with nigeria if you want to have a good experience you have to go through referrals because then it's some somebody has already vetted them they've already been working with this person for two years they trust them so it's easier so that's one way um one thing that you have to be aware of coming into nigeria is that there's if you want more bang for your buck you can actually change this funds on the black market um, and you get way 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 more value for your foreign currency but i would say recently in the last year or two there's been all these apps now that uh, like Sandwave, Word Remit, Remitly, TransferWise, there's so many of them that you can actually have an app. You don't even have to do it with cash like that. You can just get an app. Um, the app can connect your bank accounts to it and then transfer money to your bank account in Nigeria. The downside to this is a lot of people that are traveling or coming here, they don't have a Nigerian bank account, which we're gonna talk about in this video, and or they don't have a bank account. It's not as easy to open here as you might think. So the one thing that I think it's cool, which a lot of people hate this by the way, but I think that it's a benefit to people that are traveling here is that you can actually, through Word Remit, which is the one that I'm most familiar with, you can send money as a cash pickup to yourself. 
um, which is brand new. I think the Nigerian government decided that they're going to stop any transfer into a Nigerian account. You need to either have a domiciliary account, which we will talk about, or you have to do cash pickup. So for me, I thought that was good because I can get the money in foreign currency and then I can go exchange it on the black market. Downside to that is inconvenient. You have to stand in line and the safety of having to go in line to get your money and thinking that you might get robbed or all of those type of things. But um, if you go to a, more, a secured location, a secured bank, you'll be fine. You can actually wire money to yourself and then just go do a cash pickup when you get to Nigeria. So that's like, and then change it in the bank itself, but it would be a more, a cheaper rate or change it on the black market to find somebody. So that's one way you can get money to yourself. Now, one thing to consider if you're leaving another country to come to Nigeria, big mistake that I made. Before all of this happened, I actually had a hard time getting money in here. Um, because I didn't have a bank account, I didn't have a domiciliary account. The app was not working because they realized that I was in Nigeria. So the app flagged the Nigerian country to not allow any transaction. Some of the things Nigerians have to deal with because of the bad reputation of wire, wire fraud. So one thing that I needed to do is before I left the US was that um, I didn't realize that you have to physically go into a bank and actually put a signature on file for them to allow you to wire money to Nigeria or other countries. So I made that mistake. So when I was calling my bank, they couldn't do it because I didn't physically come into the bank to approve wire transactions. So I would like to save you the headache before you leave and you want to transfer money. If your income is coming from outside of Nigeria, make sure that you go to your bank and ask them about wiring money, to Nigeria if Nigeria is allowed and the things that you need to do to set it up before you leave. So that way, when you call them to make the wire transactions, the process is smoother rather than being here. So that's one thing that I learned. And another thing is that I should have set up my app while I was out of the country. When I tried to set it up here, the apps were saying, no, you cannot set this up in this country because it it realizes the location that you're in. So the way that I overcome that was I created a new account and then I used a VPN to point to a state in US for the app to finally allow me to do it. And even then, it was still flagged, depending on the amount that you're sending. So I had to, ch um, and it took forever, so I had to chat with Word Remit, send my ID for verification, do a lot more extra steps for them to finally allow me to send the funds. So, Long story short, if you're going to use the app to send money to yourself or to friends, make sure that you set it up. You have a login, all of that stuff outside before you come into Nigeria. Or use a VPN, and a VPN is a virtual private network, which is a way to point your IP address to another place. So anything that you're doing, it looks like you're in another state, and you can bounce your IP address. That's like a whole nother topic. But just know you can use VPN. It would it would treat your internet like you're browsing from another state. For some people, they said it hasn't worked. So don't quote me if it doesn't work for you. So that's one thing that I had to maneuver and figure out. My bank later allowed it, but they had to get approval from like another guy and another manager in order to be able to do that transaction. Um, so make sure that you have that. One thing that I noticed really, really fast here in Nigeria is that um, a lot of people don't do a lot of cash transactions anymore or what they do is they do tr bank transfers, which is something I've never done before. So everybody, bank gives them an account number and everybody makes transactions through account number. So all the apps that you get with your bank here, whether it's Zenith Bank, World Access Bank, they'll give you access to this app that's designed for you to be able to transfer money to everybody. So if I wanna, if I did, like I got a haircut now and I want to pay for that, all I need is their name and their account number and my app would allow me to transfer money to their account. And I do that literally 90% of my transactions is done through transfer. I've even went to go eat at a restaurant and the way that they want us to pay is through transfer. Like you can just transfer money to their account. 
some of the reasons why some businesses are doing this, why they're not taking cash or, or, or doing some of these things is that for security reasons. So maybe they hire somebody to work in their shop. They don't want the person to like take money or do anything. So they want all the transactions to all be electronic. So some people own a business and they don't live here or they live in another place. It's a way to minimize uh, that. And it's also convenient because the money can be directly into their account. They can track what's going on. So make sure a bank account is crucial. Even if you're using somebody else's bank account and you're putting money in there, transfer is very, very popular. In US or other countries, in order to do a transfer, you have to log on to your bank accounts, you have to get all this information, their routing number and their account number, and it takes two to three days sometimes. But here, it's instant, like you can transfer money and it's instant. And they get an alert notification on their phone. When you transfer, you get an alert. The security here with money transactions, it feels inconvenient, um, but it's also comforting because they've taken so many steps to prevent fraud that sometimes it feels restrictive. Um, but I think it's a good thing. So like now, every single transaction that happens on my account, on my card, I get an alert on my phone. Every single transaction. And initially I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. But at the same time, the more that I think about it, it's actually nice knowing that you get an alert every time you run, just in case something somebody uses your card or uses your information you'd be able to get an alert right away and stop it. So that's something that you guys need to get used to when you're coming here. Or you can use POS, I mean, a card, and do regular transactions with a PIN. Now, in other places they have PIN-less transactions, but here you actually have to know your PIN. You cannot do any transactions without your PIN, so that's different. In US, you can run a card as credit, but here you need to run it as PIN. And one thing that I had to get used to is every time I want a transaction, they're always going to ask you if it's current or savings or these things. For the longest time, I didn't know what to say. So eventually, I learned that current means checking account. <laughs> and, or you can use your savings. So every time I go, I just say, yes, current. And then, then you, they give you the amount and then you put your information in there. So that's something else to get used to that when you don't forget your pin you have to remember your pin at all times and also sometimes and this is just the sometimes living in third world country sometimes your card would decline it's not because there's not money in there it's because of there's a network problem <laughs> whether with the bank or whatever or their pos system whatever the case may be so again if the more prepared you are, the less frustrated you're going to be. So it's better to have backup plan. When I have two banks, two cards, or have some cash, just in case for some reason there's a network down, you're still able to make your transactions. I literally went to a grocery store, got all of my food items in a cart, and then the network stopped working for my cart. So now I had to put everything back and leave the grocery store. Bad, 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 bad. <laughs> so make sure that you guys are aware of that. It doesn't happen often, but occasionally it happens. So you never know when it's going to happen. So um, another thing is that they have something here called POS, like kiosk, all over the place. Um, so typically in other countries, there are ATM machines. And they have ATM machines here. But... Um, they also have this kind of unique system. It's very, very interesting. So like some people have a business. ATM is their business. They're like a human ATM machine. So they have some cash with them and then they have a like a POS system. So you can bring your card and say, I want to take 10,000 Naira out of my account. And they charge you like 200 Naira for it and then they give you the cash that you want. They charge roughly like 100 Naira or 200 Naira, depending on the amount of transaction that you want, and then it goes up from there. Maybe if you want 30K, they charge you 600 Naira, like 200 Naira per 10K. But that's the way that they make money. I just think it's cool because they're everywhere, so you don't have to wait in line for an ATM machine. You can just 
walk on the side of the road, stop by a POS, and then get the money from them. So I, I think that's cool. So that's one way you can get access to your money once you open up a bank account. Now, those are the different ways to do transaction here. You can do transfer, you can do POS, you can do, um, of course, regular card and regular cash. All of that is still available. Now, let's talk about bank. So there's some things in Nigeria that just doesn't work as smooth as it should. Um, and opening up a bank account was one of them. So one of the things I wanted to experience was like, although I have connections that I can use, sometimes I wanted to experience what like a normal citizen of Nigeria would go through. And guys, don't go through that if you don't want to stress yourself. <laughs> it's horrible and I feel bad about it because some people are in line for a long time just to accomplish simple tasks. But anyways, it took me four days to open up my bank account. I was in line for like three hours. And then when I got to the line, they told me that the system and the network is down. So then after spending, wasting three to four hours, I now had to come back on another day. But long story short, for your bank, you need a BVN. You need an address of a sponsor in Nigeria. You need a copy of your bill of an utility bill of a residence that you live at in Nigeria. And a BVN is like a, an individual identification number that they use for any financial transactions in Nigeria. Um, and then if you don't have it, you can go somewhere to another bank or the current bank where they do a fingerprints, they take your picture. It's very, very serious business to open up a bank account. And then when you open up the bank account, you have to make sure that you stay there so they set up your mobile app and you set up a pin to transfer money because transfer is the most common way that I see and then you need another pin for when you do regular transactions and then some banks have the cards that you can get immediately there sometimes you have to come back two three days later or another day to get your card you have to know someone that lives here so you can use their address and their utility bill in order to be able to open up a Nigerian Naira bank account now, a domiciliary bank account is a US dollar account. So I think it's probably advisable that you open up that one as well. That one is a pure dollar account. Um, you can transfer money through these apps directly to your domiciliary accounts like the World Remit, all the same wave, all the third party apps. So that way you don't have to deal with cash pickup if you don't want to, at least for now till the rules change. Um, and then, <clears throat> Domiciliary accounts, they require reference, they require a bill, all of the same, they require BVN, all the other stuff, and you need a minimum amount of dollars to be able to open up that domiciliary account. Also, the benefits of having a domiciliary account is also, this is one of the things that slowed me down. If you're wiring money from a foreign country to a Nigerian account, I mean, to Nigeria, they won't, it's easier to wire to a US dollar account when you're wiring and transferring money. So it's better to have that if you're gonna do transactions, a lot of transactions here, you need some sort of way to figure out money. Anyways, that is just a quick summary of how money works here. Now, I wanted to show you guys what some of this money looks like. Um, also, they used to have what they called combo, which is like coins, but I feel like, to be honest, I don't think there's anything you can get for that. It's probably disappeared and phased out forever. So the smallest um, currency that I can, that I was able to get my hands on is five naira. And to be honest, I don't know what five naira can get in Nigeria right now. So I think ten naira, just to give you guys an idea of value, ten naira can get you like one small bean cake or one small beignet or puff puff, which is also actually went up to like fifteen or twenty naira. I'll say twenty five naira can get you like a slice of pineapple or one small fruit um, or an orange, somewhere from 25 to 50 Naira. And then 400 Naira, which is what's closest to $1, I think can get you like a, like a scoop of rice if you go out to eat. Um, 400 Naira, 500 Naira, maybe like a, you can use it to catch a taxi that's like maybe five minutes away. Um, drinks that you would drink are typically 100 Naira in general. Some drinks are like 150 Naira. 
And then if you're getting like beer or like higher level drinks, some of them are like 300 Naira. Um, I'm just giving you guys a rough idea of value. If you wanted to get like a whole pineapple, it's typically 400 Naira or a papaya 400 Naira. Some of these prices are island prices. Some of them are mainland prices. Um, make sure to watch my video on mainland island if you want to know the differences between the two different parts of Lagos. Um, what else? Uh, a plate of food on the island sometimes, maybe like, a, or actually in Nigeria in general, you can get like a plate of rice, plantain, fish, and some chicken for like 2,000 Naira, somewhere around that area or 1,500 1, Naira. Um, what else? Other than that, a lot of electronic and imported things are a little bit more expensive. They're probably the same rates as you are in that country, but definitely locally sourced drinks are cheaper, fruits are cheaper, everything that's made locally is typically cheaper. And some things are more expensive, like, um, like if you want like a smoothie or a salad or pancakes or things like that. So that is a general rough idea of just the money transaction. Um, what else am I missing? If you go do laundry for like one thing of laundry to like wash and rinse, it would probably be for one pile to wash and rinse at a laundry would be like 2,000 Naira, which is equivalent to like $4 or something like that. Anyways, that's a quick overview of money and transactions in Nigeria. I hope that you guys get value out of watching this video. Uh, at least hopefully that you learned something that you can implement before you come to Nigeria. So you're not, so you're a little bit familiar with how transaction and how money works here. Thanks for watching the video. If you got any value out of this video, make sure to like, share, comment below. And please consider subscribing to support my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and go make that money.